what faith is not, and also, how to make your faith work. Let us pray. Dearest Everlasting Heavenly Father, thank you for the grace to be alive and to be able to share your words as you quicken them in our spirit. Father, as your word comes forth, let lives be transformed, let the faith of your people be quickened and empowered to produce results, and let your name Lord, be glorified, in Jesus' most precious name I pray. Amen. Still in the series, we have been looking at. If you have been following our teachings, you will discover that in our discussion of what faith is, we did say that in the follow-up edition, we would be looking at what faith is not. And here we are. Many people hold many things they call or think is faith, but in the actual content, concept, or context of faith, those things are not the biblical faith that the Bible teaches, and as such, they cannot have the results of faith or produce all the capabilities of the biblical faith, as captured and enshrined in the scriptures. It therefore became necessary that we explain what faith really means. Because to get the most out of faith, you have to understand what faith is and is not. The Bible defines faith in Hebrews 11 verse 1. As the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. That was a perfect definition we can say, but you have got to understand that it is not just about anything that's hoped for, but anything hopes for that is bearing or that is backed by the biblical promises of God. In another word, what you hoped must have biblical backing as belonging to you according to God's promises. Having said that, faith is not a mere hope in anything. It is substantial anticipation anchored on your belief in the infallibility of God in accordance with Hebrews 10 verse 23. Hebrews 10 verse 23 says, Let us hold fast the confession of our hope without wavering, for he who promised is faithful. Every workable faith must have its root in the word of God. This was clearly stated in Romans 10 verse 17. So then faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. The word of God must be the source of your faith. If faith is not derived from the word of God, it cannot produce the results that were ascribed to faith in the word of God. Therefore on this note, we must understand that faith is not the same as sheer belief. No, it is not. Although faith may have a lot to do with those concepts and terms, but they are not same and coterminous. Faith is different from belief in that it is based on the revealed Word of God. So the difference here is basically about the object of the belief and the source of your conviction. You could believe in a man, but only in God can you have faith. Because a man can inadvertently or unwittingly fail you due to his limitations in knowledge, ability, and capabilities. But God cannot fail you, being that he is not subject to such imperfections, weaknesses, and limitations as men are. Hope is not faith, though they may resemble, they are not the same. Faith is not an idly waiting for God. Faith is not necessarily about what you can see, feel or touch. Faith is not about feeling, as a matter of fact, the Bible says in 2 Corinthians, chapter 5, verse 7. For we walk by faith, not by sight. Faith is not common sense or rationalizing. Although faith may be related to one or both of the aforementioned, it is not wholly the same as either. On hope or concerning hope, the Bible says in 1 Corinthians, chapter 13, verse 13. And now abide faith, hope, love, these three, but the greatest of these is love. Faith is one thing, and hope is another. Faith has the word of God as the substance or the guarantee of what is hoped for. Just as we saw in the definition of faith in Hebrews 11 verse 1. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. An expectation not backed or guaranteed by the Word of God is qualified to be referred to as hope. And hope can be dashed, 
intentionally or unintentionally, when it is not rooted in faith and in the unfailing promises of God. But when hope is based on faith and backed by faith in the unfailing word of God, it cannot fail or disappoint. The Bible says in Romans 5, from verses 1 to 5. Therefore, having been justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Through whom also we have access by faith into this grace in which we stand, and rejoice in hope of the glory of God. And not only that, but we also glory in tribulations, knowing that tribulation produces perseverance. And perseverance, character, and character, hope. Now hope does not disappoint, because the love of God has been poured out in our hearts by the Holy Spirit who was given to us. But concerning faith, which is basically about having absolute trust in God and His Word. The Bible says in Isaiah 49 verse 23, Kings shall be your foster fathers, and their queens your nursing mothers, they shall bow down to you with their faces to the earth, and lick up the dust of your feet. Then you will know that I am the Lord, for they shall not be ashamed who wait for me. And again on non-disappointability of faith, the Bible says in Romans chapter 10, verse 11. For the scripture says, whoever believes on him will not be put to shame. Faith is also not about idly waiting for God. No, faith is about taking action based on the trust you have in God to fulfill his plans and purposes through you. That is why the Bible says in Mark chapter 10, verse 27. But Jesus looked at them and said, With men it is impossible, but not with God, for with God all things are possible. The Bible didn't say, to God all things are possible, but instead, with God all things are possible. Meaning that God works with men to accomplish his plans and purposes. So it is not active faith to wait in faith without venturing, God instead wants you to venture with trust in him to do unto you as he has promised. In James chapter 2, from verses 18, 22, 24, and 26, let's look at what the Bible says. Verse 18. But someone will say, You have faith, and I have works. Show me your faith without your works, and I will show you my faith by my works. 22. Do you see that faith was working together with his works, and by works faith was made perfect? 24. You see then that a man is justified by works, and not by faith only. Verse 26. For as the body without the spirit is dead, so faith without works is dead also. So faith is proved by work. If there are things you are exercising faith in God to do for you, I want to tell you that God is rather waiting for you to venture into them, and he will come and accomplish them through you. Don't continue to be idly expecting. Take the step of faith by acting, venture, and see God help you actualize it. God told the Israelites in Deuteronomy chapter 2, verse 3. Ye have compassed this mountain long enough, turn you northward. In another word, they waited so long that they should take action by moving northward and seeing him take action with them. So staying without action is like idling away and not having faith. Finally, faith is not about what we can see, touch, or feel. Faith is about what we believe and trust God to do. Hence the Bible says in Habakkuk chapter 2, verse 4. Behold, his soul which is lifted up is not upright in him, but the just shall live by his faith. Let us pray. Everlasting Father, King of glory, we thank you yet again for the grace to have shared your word as you have quickened our spirit. Lord, let the shared word bring healing, deliverance, salvation and hope to all who have listened to it. Father, now that your people have heard and understood what faith is, grant them mouth-watering testimonies as they venture out this month, starting from this week, in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, dearest Lord, for answering, for in Jesus' name we pray. Amen.